Hey guys, so I get a lot of people commenting on my videos and reaching out about what steroids are safe for your hair, if there are any. And I wanted to delve into this topic for the purposes of this video to explain how some steroids are worse for your hair than others and how you actually differentiate which ones are going to eviscerate your hairline versus those that may be relatively more safe and how finasteride, dutasteride or DHT blockers play into this equation. So it basically comes into something that I spoke about in a previous video, which is myotrophic to androgenic dissociation and this is the split between how much a steroid can grow muscle versus how much it's going to affect androgenic tissues like the prostate skin liver kidneys beard growth for example clitoris growth on a woman these are all androgenic effects now it's pretty well established and as i've spoken about and written about extensively on my website dht is the primary hair follicle killer this is the hormone that is converted when testosterone is reduced by an enzyme called 5 alpha reductase it's highly prevalent in skin tissue we get testosterone being converted to DHT in the skin of our scalp and then that is going to bind to androgen receptors in and around the hair follicle and exert miniaturization effects and basically kill off our hair follicles to the point where we go bald. This is why it's called androgenic alopecia. However, in this study, researchers looked at testosterone versus DECA, which is nandrolone, and the study looked at four compounds, testosterone, DHT, now testosterone is reduced to DHT, so those two go together, and then nandrolone and DHN. Now, nandrolone is reduced to DHN by the same enzyme for 5-alpha reductase. So nandrolone and DHN, dihydronandrolone, they go together. And this study wanted to look at the relative binding affinity, so how strongly they can bind to the androgen receptor and exert androgenic effects across these four compounds, testosterone, DHT, nandrolone, DHN. And what they found was interesting. They found that the relative binding affinities in androgenic tissues was as follows. DHT was obviously the strongest. This has been shown in multiple studies that DHT is anywhere from five to six to seven times stronger than testosterone. Nandrolone was second, testosterone was third, and DHN was fourth, or DHN, in other words, was the weakest binder to the androgen receptor. As you can see in this table, DHN is going to bind and compete for the androgen receptor the least at around 12% of what DHT does, keeping in mind that the values in brackets are the ones that we're looking at in the table. Now, if I just stopped the video here, you'd probably be concerned. Nandrolone has a higher affinity for the androgen receptor than testosterone, so how could a nandrolone cycle ever be safe for your hair. In fact, it should be worse for your hair loss, right? Well, no, because the 5 alpha reductase enzyme comes into play in a big way, like I said, in skin tissue. And we're not just looking at testosterone in androgenic alopecia or balding, it's DHT. So we need to not look at nandrolone, but we need to look at what it is converted to or reduced to by 5 alpha reductase in skin. And that is going to be DHN, dihydronandrolone. Now, usually once T is reduced to DHT, we know that the relative binding affinity goes up and DHT becomes a lot stronger of a steroid and a lot more androgenic, it goes from a binding value of around 0.1 to 0.2 all the way up to one, a very significant increase in potency. However, nandrolone once reduced to DHN goes from 0.32 to 0.12 and almost three times decrease in potency at the nuclear androgen receptor. So whereas the reduction of T to DHT increases potency, the reduction of nandrolone to DHN reduces potency significantly and reduces androgenicity or the androgenic potential of nandrolone significantly by around three times. So despite nandrolone being more competitive for the androgen receptor and worse for balding at face value, it may actually be safer for your hair as it is not converted to DHT when it interacts with 5 alpha reductase, but it is converted to something around one tenth as potent. However, the irony is that actually taking finasteride or dutasteride would make nandrolone a terrible choice on cycle if you cared about your hair. And how is this the case? How is it that the usual hair loss drugs like DHT blockers like finasteride, dutasteride, would actually be worse for your hair if you were taking nandrolone. Well, because the conversion of nandrolone to DHN favors hair safety, in other words, DHN is the least androgenic out of the four compounds, stopping this conversion with finasteride or dutasteride, which bind to the 5-alpha reductase enzyme and stop it functioning as seen in this image, would lead to basically more nandrolone in your skin and less DHN being produced. So you'd be keeping actually more nandrolone and stopping nandrolone going down its pathway to DHN. Now, if this was just testosterone and DHN, DHT, this is perfect and this is exactly why these hair loss drugs work. Because you have all this testosterone being converted to DHT, you want to stop the DHT, which is a lot worse than testosterone. And this is why men taking finasteride or dutasteride who are natural or on TRT see good clinical outcomes on DHT blockers because they're actually removing the worse and the more androgenic compound from their blood, which is DHT. However, the more androgenic compound between nandrolone and DHN is actually nandrolone. So you want it to be converted 
to DHN and you don't want to stop that process. Otherwise, you're going to have a compound that's three times more androgenic in your blood building up and not being able to be reduced to DHN. So it's actually counterintuitive that the Halos drugs on a nandrolone cycle are not going to work and actually do the reverse of what you want. And this is why I sometimes get men come to me who are on a nandrolone only cycle or who have nandrolone with testosterone in their cycle, for example, and they're taking finasteride and dutasteride and they're wondering why their hair loss is actually getting worse when previously they were just on testosterone or just on TRT and they had no issues. It's because they're actually, without realizing, stopping the conversion of nandrolone to DHN, which actually reduces the androgenic potential of nandrolone, thinking that they're actually doing the right thing by blocking any DHT, but you actually want DHN if you're on a nandrolone only cycle in terms of your hair. And it's confusing because in the case of testosterone and DHT, this is exactly what you want. Less DHT and less conversion and blocking of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme means less of the heavily androgenic compound exerting its hair killing and hair follicle killing effects on your scalp and making you bald basically. But it's completely the opposite. When you're on nandrolone, you don't want to stop 5-alpha reductase if you care about your hair. And to back this up in this study, you can see that when a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor is introduced, nandrolone becomes significantly more androgenic, which is the fourth bar from the left in this graph. And this is precisely because blocking the 5-alpha reductase in the nandrolone only group leaves a much more androgenic compound in the blood, as opposed to it being able to be reduced to a much less androgenic compound in DHN by 5-alpha reductase. And as expected, you can see that 5-alpha reductase inhibition of testosterone significantly reduced the androgenic load as measured by the prostate stimulation, which is a very heavily androgenic tissue, because in terms of androgenicity, DHT is much greater than testosterone, as I've said multiple times. So in conclusion, what do you need to know? DHN is significantly less androgenic than testosterone, DHT, and nandrolone. Stopping the conversion of testosterone to DHT is the conventional wisdom and will absolutely slow down your balding if you are on testosterone or natural. But the opposite is true for nandrolone. You actually want the reduction of the parent compound nandrolone to DHN as it converts nandrolone into a relatively more safer option in DHN for your hair loss. And DHN being active and binding to the androgen receptors around your hair follicles is going to sit in that active binding site and exert 90% less androgenic activity than something like DHT. This is sort of similar to how something like an androgen receptor blocker like RU58841 works. It sits in the active binding site of the androgen receptor and stops more potent androgens being able to bind and wreaking havoc on your hair follicles. So if you are worried about your hair on cycle and using certain compounds, understanding the pharmacokinetics of the compounds and whether they're able to be reduced and their interaction with 5-alpha reductase is really important. And then also understanding if they are a substrate for the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, what happens to the androgenic potential and androgenic rating of that new compound? Does it go up? Does it go down? And you need to understand how finasteride and dutasteride would either make your hair loss worse by stopping that conversion or better in the case of testosterone and DHT. Is it going to make your hair loss worse? Is it going to make your hair loss better? And then understanding both how androgenic the parent compound is and then how androgenic the compound that is produced by 5-alpha reductase is and comparing those two. So in the case of testosterone to DHT, blocking the 5-alpha reductase enzyme is really important because for balding, you don't want DHT and testosterone is a lot less androgenic than DHT. But in the case of nandrolone, you want that conversion because nandrolone being a substrate for 5-alpha reductase, DHN is produced and that is a lot less androgenic than nandrolone. So understanding what the more and less androgenic compound is out of the two, if it even is able to be reduced is really important. And understanding those ratios and being able to decide how finasteride and dutasteride work into the equation is going to be super important on your hair. If you do have any questions or need help on this, feel free to drop a comment. I'm more than happy to reply to you. Guys, this is a video on hair health and balding on cycle and how to mitigate those side effects. If you are interested in more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.